The symbiotic relationship between Australian Aboriginals and dingoes can provide insights into the domestication of wolves in ancient Central Europe. That is the working hypothesis of a team of researchers studying how wolves became early dogs in the Pleistocene. The researchers, Adam Brum, Maitie Gamompre and Lucas Kungulos, have held up the feral Australian dingo as an example of how canines were brought into the orbit of humans and adapted to perform useful tasks. Human hunter-gatherer populations in late Pleistocene Eurasia routinely raided wild wolf dens for pre-weaned pups, which were socialised to humans and kept in camp as tamed companions, the authors of a new study entitled The Human-Initiated Model of Wolf Domestication, an expansion based on human-dingo relations in Aboriginal Australia found. The paper, published in the journal Frontiers in Psychology, outlines a model in which captive wolf pups that reverted to the wild to breed when they were sexually mature established their territories in the vicinity of foraging communities in a liminal ecological zone between humans and truly wild-living wolves. Many, or most, of the wolf pups humans took from the wilderness to rear in camp may have derived from these liminal dens, where the breeding pairs have been under indirect human selection for tameness over many generations. The authors say that this process highlights the importance of the large seasonal hunting-slash-aggregation camps associated with mammoth kill sites in Gravettian or Epigravettian Central Europe. The Gravettian and Epigravettian dates from 33,000 years ago to around 10,000 years ago. It was a period defined by the presence of enormous animals known as Pleistocene megafauna, including mammoths, cave lions, woolly rhinoceros and giant short-faced bears. The researchers say that the mammoth kill sites were meeting points for a large number of foragers who gathered there annually during the wolves' breeding season. The authors suggest that, over multiple generations, wolves that denned and whelped in these liminal zones close to the seasonal camps became the first domesticated dogs. The wolves who bred at the sites became the first source of pups which were taken and gradually domesticated and dispersed close to the camps. The animals' limited range meant that breeding options were narrow and inbreeding took place, fixing the domesticated traits. The study read, It is this pattern of hunter-gatherers who caught and reared wild wolf pups, gathering seasonally in large numbers, that might have been the catalyst for the early changes leading to the first domesticated dogs, whether in western Eurasia or further afield. It added, it is reasoned that late Pleistocene women and children are likely to have played a central role in hand-raising young adopted wolves and other juvenile animals taken from the wild. At the time of the European colonisation of Australia in 1788, most Aboriginal people lived in small foraging communities that moved seasonally between resource areas within a defined territorial range, although population density and patterns of mobility and settlement varied across the continent according to rainfall and other environmental features. During the early colonial period, Europeans commonly observed Aboriginal people cohabitating with dingoes. It has been demonstrated that this was not always the case, and, in fact, Aboriginals would at one time raid the dens of dingoes to take the pups as a food source. But, eventually, whilst this practice continued, some pups were saved from being eaten, and were lovingly hand-reared. Numerous observers recorded that some were kept alive specifically with the intention of raising them in human society. These so-called camp dingoes had varied roles in indigenous communities, including guard animals, seemingly both from real and spiritual threats. Most authorities agree that Aboriginal people did not intentionally control the breeding of camp dingoes. Instead, the available accounts consistently state that they acquired dingo pups by conducting raids on wild dens. The Pitjantjatjara people of Central Australia organised special purpose expeditions, including the midwinter pup whelping season, to raid wild dingo dens, with the intention of obtaining newborn pups as food and pets. Women most commonly undertook this surrogate mothering role. The conclusion of the paper read, The close relationship between Aboriginal Australians and wild dingoes, as documented in the ethno-historical record, has implications for our understanding of the human-canid relations that may, ultimately, have given rise to domestic dogs in late Pleistocene Eurasia. Based on the dingo analogy, we contend that regular raiding of wolf dens for pre-weaned pups was a defining trait for the intimate relationship between humans and wolves that long preceded the appearance of the earliest uncontested dog remains in Eurasia. 
It added, We further infer that when hand-reared, socialised, human-selected wolf pups reach sexual maturity, they often would have reverted to the wild to breed, although some could have matured in captivity. The dispersing socialised wolves commonly formed mated pairs with each other, but sometimes with wild Pleistocene wolves. The former would have most commonly established their territory in a liminal zone situated between human settlement sites and the environment inhabited by strictly wild-living wolves, which had a natural fear of humans and actively avoided them. Consequently, the socialised canids often denned and whelped in the liminal zone close to human campsites, and hence each new generation of wild-born pups humans took from dens located close to their camps would include some or many of the offspring of human-selected canids. So what do you think of the study? Could the Aboriginal dingo relationship be seen as a model for how Pleistocene humans domesticated wolves? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.